Welcome back, everybody, to Ravenhurst. I am an old guy gaming in. In this episode, we're going to continue work on our new horde base. And so let's see here. I think I think the first thing we need to do, though, is we need to grab ourselves some forged iron. Uh, looks like I already have some. And grab some spikes and go check our spikes. I know they've uh, taken a beating over the last few days, and I have kind of not paid a whole lot of attention to them because they're just, you know, doing their job, right, and taking care of things for us. So let's go check out here. I really should probably harvest the carrots because I've got plenty of other stuff, but it's the carrots that are a little, we're a little low on. So I don't know. I, I want to get that horde base done though. That's just really our highest priority right now. Okay. So let's just start in this back corner here and go along and touch up the spikes wherever they need to be touched up. Uh, these ones back here aren't in too bad a shape. So just kind of run along here whenever they look a little twisted or whatever that's where they need to to be repaired and and also if i didn't already say this uh, the spikes are are doing a really good job with the screamers so the screamers still are coming in of course because i got this place heated up like a freaking oven but this uh, this you know the uh, spikes are killing them and i'm not having to come out here and risk you know alerting them to try and kill them myself so a lot of this damage though that you see is from other zombos too they're not just from screamers because of course there's no way i can tell the other zombos to stay away you know and they're just not going to listen to me they never have listened to me they're like naughty little children did you hear that fat dude you're a naughty little kid off with his head um my my sledge here is, uh, you know, it's down to, to green level, which means I had to take a uh, one of the mods off, and I ended up taking off the um, the blunted weapon fitting in favor of the ergonomic mod, uh, or ergonomic grip on, rather, because, uh, you know, for stamina, um, but I'm kind of missing that blunted weapon fitting. All right, so we got we've got some damage down here. Nothing like too major though. They haven't like just where are you going? There. They haven't like destroyed everything, so that's definitely good. We are missing some spikes down here that we'll have to replenish. Let's get those repaired. And so yeah, that blunted weapon. Oh, damn it! I turned it the wrong way. I'm not changing it now. <laughs> um, is really nice to have on the sledge you know because of the knockdown effect and all that but uh if what if it comes down between that or running out of stamina i think you know keeping our stamina is a little more important so um just kind of because of the way things went last night i didn't get two full stacks of limestone like i normally try and do I only got like a stack and a half or so, so we're not going to have quite as much concrete, but I mean, that's okay. We still have plenty of other things to work on whilst we're waiting for the concrete. We have very minimal damage on the wall now, too, because here again, the spikes are, you know, pretty much just keeping the zombos at bay for the most part. And, uh, you know, this is really a pretty cheap defense, too. It's way cheaper than the shotguns. I should have not even done those damn shotgun turrets, but... You know, I guess I didn't realize that they were going to, uh, you know, still cause the screamers to, to scream. I thought they would take care of them, but, and maybe they're nerfed in Ravenhurst. I did it again. <laughs> maybe they're nerfed in Ravenhurst. I don't know, man. That could be too. Let me know in the comments if you guys know if they're nerfed in Ravenhurst. Uh, because in vanilla, they're pretty OP. You know, shotgun turrets uh, are amazingly OP in vanilla. Uh, at least in my experience with them. And they have they have an amazing range for, you know, a shotgun too, in vanilla. Okay, that's the first one we got cricket, and it it didn't break it. So, but yeah, overall these spikes are are doing doing well, definitely doing well. Okay, I think that fixes at what. Did I miss something here? Or? Yeah, it looks like I missed that one. Okay. 
I could just tell, you know, by looking down the line that was off a little bit, which is kind of nice because, yeah, if you just look down the line, you can you can tell pretty much if one of the spikes is still off. So it works out really good. Um, This one, oh, yeah, that's the one we put in Crooked, too. Okay. So let's see. Where are we at? Let's go back in the house and see uh, what our resource situation is. This drawbridge is really weird, man. Sometimes it, it just flips up and down. And then other times it just works like it's supposed to. Okay, there we go. I think it might have something to do with approaching it from the side. Oh, I had to kind of make a quick crossing of the <laughs> of the drawbridge when I had zombies chasing me. That's why my bike isn't really parked very well. Um, but we should be able to leave it there. And it should be fine. Okay. Uh, you know, I just fixed the damn spikes. Come here, you dummy. Don't be messing with my spikes, man. Yeah, hopefully we'll, you know, once we can get out and start looting again and all that, we can come across a, another high-level steel sledge. I'm not uh, high enough in skill yet to make make anything beyond, like, I think it's an orange, maybe a low-level yellow one. Um, speaking of skills, too, by the way, I have... Uh, we're waiting for one more point here for... Uh, the uh, last fortitude point that we need to get, but uh, I am very close on mining tools. I have four levels to go, and then I'm, I'll hit 100, and then we can take advanced tools, which will allow us to um, unlock the aluminum pickaxe, and I presume also be able to make red level picks, because I'm already making high level pink picks when I, you know, when I craft them, so um, even higher than this. Uh, th this I did a combined, so that's why it's just a little bit lower there. Let's see what kind of concrete action we got. Okay, we got a little bit. Um, we basically, we'll be able to do 98, uh, yeah, 98 blocks with that. Um, so let's put that back away. And I think, oh, you know what else I need to do is I need to get some wood. I'm really, really low on wood at this point. We're still making gunpowder there. And I'm pretty much putting almost all my gunpowder into pipe bombs at this point because that's what we're planning. I'm planning on using um, on Horde Night is pipe bombs. I could make grenades. Well, actually, can I make grenades? Maybe I can't. I don't remember if I learned the schematic for it or not. Uh, grenade. Yeah, I can make them, but they're a little bit more expensive. We need to just go wrench the crap out of a bunch of cars, you know, because we need the springs and the mechanical parts and, and the iron, too, but those things in particular um, so that we can get that uh you know start making grenades but we're gonna we're gonna keep sticking with pipe bomb pipe bombs do uh a, a surprising amount of damage uh considering that they're you know a low level explosive so okay i think we're done farting around here i'm probably forgetting something we got rebar um we're gonna go we're gonna go pick up a little bit of wood while we're out and about we got all the concrete that we currently have do we have all of the steel Let's uh, reload this. You know, the good and bad thing about the Blacksmith Forge is that it it smelts very, very quickly. And that's good, but it's also kind of a pain in the butt because it finishes smelting before I can come back and refill it. So a lot of times it's just running empty. And that's also in part due to the stupid small-ass stack sizes <laughs> in Raven Earth. You know, I wish that, that this could be doubled. I don't know. Is that even something in the settings we could fix? I never even bothered to think about that. I think we'd have to look at that probably uh, probably in the game settings before we start the game. But if there was a way to increase the stack sizes, even if we could just double them, I'd be happier just i don't know it's just so inefficient um anyway well whatever let's uh let's get going here uh, it's too damn late in this playthrough for us to be changing stuff like that we're just you know we made our bed we're sleeping in it kind of thing <laughs> but you know for next time anyway see we already ran out of fuel in this guy so let's just take you know what screw it we're gonna go get wood i'm gonna cut this wood in half and just keep these things going I mean, it is, I can't imagine how high the heat map is here right now. It's just probably blistering, but screw it. We got to get this stuff done. Got to get this stuff done. Okay, let's go do a little bit of logging, and then we will go uh, get back to our, our work here. I'm going to cut these trees down here 
Um, and I don't know that I'll replant them here because they kind of block our view on, of the base when we have to run away from sleepers. Not sleepers. Screamers. All right, let's get some wood. Okay, so here we are back at the base. Um, now, I screwed up and made this one block too wide this way, one block too wide this way. So what I started to do is break these out. Um, and we're going to make actually a path up on both sides. Because unlike our other base where I kind of put some obstacles for the zombos to kind of control, you know, the, the flow of them. I want the zombies pouring in here as quickly as they can, because the more zombies we can get in here, the more of them we can blow up and the more XP we're going to get. So this is going to be a fast and furious, massive, hopefully, if it works out the way that I, I intend for it, uh, hopefully it's going to be a massive XP base for us. So um, I'm going to have to break all this back out, and I'll just work on that off camera. And this back row is not supposed to be here either, but fortunately, you know, I realized it before I upgraded all these, so we can... Uh, pull all this back down and just slide everything forward one and the reason for that is because I want the internal or the interior part of this base to be a five by five space reason for that is because that is the radius of the grenades the um the pipe bombs are four by four um but the the grenades are five by five so yeah I'm gonna have to also uh, change things up out here which we can do that's not a big deal so this will now become the door and, you know, I might actually, yeah, I, yeah, hmm, I don't know. I'll think about that. Um, so, you know, the idea behind that then is if we throw a pipe bomb, um, or, you know, later on a grenade and it goes all the way to the very back end of the wall and lands in the corner, it's still going to reach all the way out to the front. Okay. Uh, so that's why I wanted, want it to be a five by five. And somehow or another, I got my count off when I was initially laying down the, uh, the blocks, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and having this out here is not going to be a problem. I'm just going to leave that there. Um, no no reason to change that. Wasted a few resources, but whatever. What can you do, right? What can you do, man? What can you do? Okay, so let's see. What do I want to do? Okay, we got it. Uh, these two poles here. So we're using that same design that we used in the other base because it's just so effective. Um, these are going to be upgraded to uh polished steel and then what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves just a really small uh, probably a three by three maybe a three by four cage and they're only going to be attached to these guys here so we have to be really careful not to add too much to that cage you know so the structural integrity can handle it and the reason we're doing that is because it's going to be the only pathway that the zombies have to us this is there's going to be a gap in here just like in our other base and uh, this is the only way they can come. And because that's the only way they can come, then that means they're not going to be breaking other stuff to try and get to us because th they can't get to us any other way other than coming through here. All right. So that is, um, you know, that's a plan for that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, be on the other side and I'm, I'm making this three blocks high and I'm going to leave a gap up above. And that way I can throw the or lob the pipe bombs and grenades over the zombies' heads that are here blocking the door, and they still get back in the chamber. And because it's a 5x5, five five, it should, in theory, hit every single zombo that's in this room. I'm probably going to also put some electric fence fences up here just to kind of keep them at bay, you know, so they're not banging on our, you know, our, our poles and stuff that we're going to be putting in like we did before. And the ones that do get through here they just drop down there and then they're going to just cycle right back up here okay so that's the basic design i'm pretty confident it's going to work well based upon you know the way that the other base we've been using has behaved or rather i should say the zombies have behaved with that base so this is a very similar idea it's just that instead of falling all the way down to bedrock and having a much longer pathway up here they have a much quicker pathway to get back to us and that's what we want because here again this is not a melee base uh, it's not even really a shooting a shooting base. It's it's an explosion base, right? So we want as many bodies in there as possible when we're lobbing those explosives in. And I'll bet you we're going to get just a metric shit ton 
of XP if this works the way that I think it's going to work. Anyway, okay, so I think we probably have all the rebar that we need to finish this part of the base. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the escape tunnel. So I have dug a tunnel from my mine, um, which is, you know, goes uh, to the north from our house, somewhere in between that house. And then I have a tunnel, then I dug, I've dug a tunnel all the way to here. And this is all at bedrock, mind you. And then the tunnel has is basically all the way to the other end. It's, it ends right down there, but again, at bedrock. So now what we're going to do on this side is I'm going to set up like a little uh, bunker kind of idea. And it's basically going to be our escape route. So if the base is compromised, if we think it's it's going to if it's going to fall, um, you know, then I'm going to I'm going to be able to escape out the other side of my cage. I'm going to put a door there. Remember, the door is going to have a gap, though, so the zombies aren't going to hit it because, you know, they're not going to have a path to it. Uh, jump in the bunker and then head down to bedrock. And then I basically I have miles of tunnels or will. Well, not miles, but, you know, <laughs> uh, lots and lots of tunnels down there to just kind of move around underground. And as long as I don't stay in one place that, you know, they'll, they'll never get to me on Horde Night. And again, that's just our escape plan or our contingency plan. I think this base is going to be fine. But, you know, this is Ravenhurst, right? So we'll see. Ultimately, we'll see how how things work out. So, okay, I think that's really all I want to update you guys on at this point in terms of talking about the base. So let's go ahead and get back to, um, you know, time lapse and keep working on this base. So I hope you guys enjoy the time lapse and the music.
this episode i have uh, just about everything done except uh, we're just waiting on concrete so uh, i'm gonna spend probably all of day 111 just mining stone to get limestone to make concrete uh, and then I'm, I'm gonna put a door in here of course too this door will remain open um, so the horde does not see it as a pathway to get to us um, i suppose theoretically they could walk out on here but if that does happen i'll just open the door and shotgun them it's not likely they'll do that because the ai i've already tested this and you guys probably saw this um during the time lapse if this door is open the ai does not see this as a pathway to me so uh, it's just there so if we do have to escape i just uh, essentially close it run down here and then then go this way so um yeah we're in pretty good shape 
uh, I did stop back by the original base and just looked at it. And really, the only thing we need to do there, if you know, if I don't get enough concrete to finish this in time, is just replace that fence post that was uh, destroyed by the exploding zombo. And the rest of the structure, at least the part that matters, is still in very good shape. So uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get this done, though, and we won't have to go back there. So um, I think that's it for now. So I'll just kind of mine my butt off and continue you know, getting concrete. I, I went, as you saw in the time lapse, I went and bought some steel polish um, so I can upgrade five more, no, four more blocks um, with this because it takes four. And those four blocks are going to be uh, these guys right here, you know, once they cure. Um, this one is just here to prevent, you know, spiders and zombies from jumping into me. Um, and that one will probably just be steel for now until we can come across some more polished steel. But I'm, I'm not expecting it to take the same damage that this would. Oh, the other thing, too, that I am planning on doing is I'm going to put at least one electric fence coming through here uh, to stun them so they can't just stand here and start wailing on things. Um, so that's also coming up, too. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to let you go here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. And we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.